so T, the first question over here is, what is a vector function? How do you find its derivative and its integrals? What is a vector function? What's the output of a vector function? It's, yeah, the output will be vectors, right? Okay, so, so and how do you find its derivative? Yeah, Jack? We're thinking the derivative of each of the um, components. Component yeah, function. Yeah. So Jack got this right. So you find the derivative of a vector function by taking the derivative of each component function, right? And several integral. You just integrate each component function, right? Yeah, good job. Okay. So <laughs> there's a lot of information right here. Okay. So a vector function is a function, the domain is real, will be a set of real number, but the range will be a set of vector. So the output of vector function will be vectors. And when you find the dual T, uh, then you just differentiate each component function. And you find the integral, you just integrate each component function, right? Yeah, that's called component function, by the way. The second question over here is, what is the connection between vector function and space curve? Yeah, so Melanie got this, okay. Melanie said that um, when you have this vector function and what happened over here is, this vector function is gonna define a space curve. And this space curve is actually traced out by the tip of each vector. When you substitute different t in this, then the tip of each this vector is going to trace out this space curve. Yeah, you got it. Okay. So a continual vector function define a space curve. Okay. So define a space curve that is traced out by the tip of the moving position vector. So the tip of this is going to trace out this space curve. Question? Okay. So just like when you have a, a function, you have a graph on 2D, but then for 3D, you have this vector function, and the tip of that is going to trace out this space curve, okay, in the space, okay. Okay, number three. How do you find the tangent vector to a smooth curve at a point? How do you find the tangent vector to a smooth curve at a point? Well, I have a diagram over here, down here. See, this is the tangent vector. This is the position vector. This is the tangent vector. Okay. And how do you tie the tangent vector to a smooth curve at a point with this position vector, RT? Tangent vector is what? It's a duality, yes. So Shannon said that the tangent vector is R prime of T. If this is, okay. So if this is the position vector RT, then R prime of T is a tangent vector. That's the duality, okay? So imagine that. So the tangent vector to a smooth curve at a point with this position RT is the vector R prime of T. How do you find the tangent line? How do you find the tangent line? How do you find this tangent line right here? For a line, you need two pieces of information, right? One is you need a point, and what else you need? You need the direction. If you know a point, you know the direction, you can write the equation of the line, right? Okay, so that's a, a quick review over here. So if you know for a line over here, so for an eye, you need a point, okay, and you also need the direction. If you have the, this two pieces of information, you'll be able to write the equation for the eye. For example, if you have this point, say x naught, y naught, and z naught in space, and it has this direction, a, b, c, actually it's a vector, a, B, C, okay, this direction vector. What's the equation for the nine? Just a quick review from last chapter. If you want to write this in the, okay, there are different, different 
equation for the line. So if you write that in the vector equation, so what's the vector equation? The vector equation will be R of T is equal to what? R naught, right? Yeah, R naught plus what? Plus, uh, let's call this one over here. This is the V, okay, V. And then um, will be, yeah, someone said that already, I heard you. So it's TV, right? It's TV. So press TV, press TV. The T over here is all your number, right? All your number. Then you get the nine. That's a, uh, that's a vector equation, okay? What are the scalar equation for the nine right here? X equal to what? So it's TV. Yes. So the scalar equations will be x equal to x naught plus t times what? A, yeah? And then y equal to what? y naught plus t times b, yes. And then z equal to z naught plus t times c. Yeah, you got it. So those three here are the scalar equations, right? Okay. And there's also a symmetric um, equation. Okay, do you guys remember? What was the symmetric equation? That is, uh, someone put that T is equal to what? X minus X naught over. Well, if you're looking at this equation, if you solve for T, right? How do you solve for T here? You can solve the t over here by using x subtracting x naught, and then divide by what? A. Then with this one, y minus y naught divided by b, divided by b is t. b minus g naught divided by c is t, and they all equal to t, and then they are equal, right? So the symmetric equation for that is x minus x naught over what? A. Yes, you got it. And then um, equal to y minus y naught over b. And that's equal to z minus z naught over c. So that's the three set of equations. Okay. And they're all related. If you can remember one of them, you can get the other, right? Okay. They're actually related. Okay, so for equation of a nine, you just need the one point on the curve and you need the direction, right? So if you try to find the equation of this tangent nine at this point, do we get a point already, right? We got a point, the P over here, right? So it's, that was given, okay? So this point P over here will be X naught, Y naught, Z naught. What will be the direction of this tangent line? What's the direction of this tangent line? It is what? R prime of t. R prime of t gives you the direction, okay? So that will correspond to this one over here, the direction. And then you can write the equation of the, not the tangent line using uh, either vector equation, scalar equation, symmetric equation. Now, what was the next question? The next question here is, how do you find the unit tangent vector? If you know the tangent vector, how do you find the unit tangent vector? So this is the tangent vector right here, right? And how do you find the unit tangent? Nine. Divide by the magnitude of that, right? So divide by magnitude. Yes, you got it. Okay, good job. So let me, this for you. Okay, let's restate that. So the tangent vector to a smooth curve at this point P with this position vector RT is R prime of T. That's the tangent vector. So tangent vector is R prime of T. And to write the equation of this tangent line, well, we just need a point, which is this point P, and you want the direction, which is R prime of T. Once you get this two piece of information, you're able to write the equation of the line, um, use one of those form right here. And to find the unit tangent vector, you just take this R prime of T divided by the magnitude of it. That's a unit tangent.
Okay. Got it? Okay. Number four. <laughs> this one is easy. If u and v are differentiable vector function, which means that the word t exists, okay, and c is a scalar, which is a, a, like a real number, and f is a real value function, okay, so which means the output of this function will be real numbers, write the rule for differentiating the following vector function. So if you differentiate the sum of these two vector function, then the sum law tells you what do we get here. That's equal to what? Uh, u prime of t plus v prime of t, right? So the derivative, the sum is the sum of the derivative, okay? What about if you have a scalar? So over here, you have a scalar multiple of this vector function. What can we do with the scalar? You can bring the scalar in front, right? So this will become what? C times u prime of t, right? Okay, you got it. Okay, next one. Uh, this one over here, if you take a real value function times this vector function, uh, when you differentiate that, then the product rule also holds. And according to the product rule, what should I put over here? F prime t times ut plus ft times u pi of t, right? Okay. Okay. The next one here, this is actually the dot product. Okay. It's not the modification. So this is the dot product. However, the result when you differentiate the dot product of these two vector function is kind of similar to the, the product rule. Tell me what, what should I put on the right hand side here? Very similar, right? That's equal to a, it's going to be take the derivative the first, and then dot it with vt, and then adding what's the next one? Take a guess. Mm -hmm. Ut, yeah, ut dotted v prime of t. Okay, so it's a dot product over here, and also for the cost product, the cost product over here is also similar to the product rule, okay? So this will be, well, everyone tell me, what should I put here? U prime t cos vt plus vt cos u prime of t, right? So similar to the product rule, except this time with, this is cos product right here. Okay, the next one here, well, this one here, you have a vector function of this scalar function inside. Then it looks like it's a compo composite function, right? So the chain rule will apply, okay? So kind of similar to the chain rule. Tell me what should I put over here? Uh-huh, yeah? Yes. So I usually think about work from outside in, like pune and then onion. So yeah, you got it. There'll be u prime of f of t times f prime of t. Yeah, you got it. So f prime of t times u prime of this. Okay, good. Okay, number five. How do you find the length of a space curve given by this vector function rt? Well, you, that was on, on the homework, right? I think a student asked about that one. Let's, let's do that. So, so the length of the space curve, right? You guys remember that one? The space curve L is equal to, and actually put that in the lesson check. I put a three different form for the formula. Okay, let's go over them. Uh, what's the first one here that will be, that is the, this, is going to be square root. Okay, and then um, say dt, t go from a to b. And what should I put inside here? So this is would be what? dx dt square, yes, you got it, plus dy dt square. Okay, I need more space. And then if it's three-dimensional, so then you have dz dt 
square, right? DT. So that was the uh, Artland formula, okay? Another way to put this is A to B, okay? Now, if the X, if the X here is expressed as a function, is, it is a function of T, if that function is F, then you can put it as F prime of T, right? And then you square this, and then you have the square, I need more space. And then you have the square dt. So if x is equal to f of t, okay, and then y is equal to g of t, then this will be g prime of t, and this is going to be, say, h, h prime of t. Okay. So this is the, this two notation here. Um, just different way to write the art length formula. If x is equal to f t, y is g of t, g is h of t. This is right. And then we also have one more form to write this equation. You guys remember that one? That is what? For this one over here, for this, this part over here, isn't this is the same as the magnitude of what? That's the magnitude of r prime, yes. That's the magnitude of r prime. See, you, you have r of t, right? However, this one over here, you differentiate that with respect to t. So it's r prime of t, okay? So this is just the magnitude of r prime of t. So you can actually write that as l equal to integral of this magnitude of r prime of t and then dt right here. So it's three different ways to write the Artland formula, okay? Uh, they're equivalent, okay. right? So you can have this. Sometimes you can think about this. Remember the Artland, think about this, this magnitude here. If R is the position function and R prime, think about it as the velocity, then this is kind of like the speed, right? It's like the speed. So when you integrate the speed, give you the total art length, okay? So like that. Now, what about the art length function? Art length function is defined by, what's the definition? It's very similar to this, except, except the upper limit here instead of B, uh, what should I put there? Will be T, right? So we'll have t, and then because we use t to reserve for this upper limit, think about this as the art length from a to t. So since we use t for the upper limit, we don't want to have a t here, so we use a different variable, so we just use u. Okay, and then we get this, this is the art length function, okay? So if you can remember the formula for art length, then you can remember the outline function. Just make the upper limit to be t, and here just use u here. Okay. Questions? Okay. The next one. What is the definition of a curvature? Curvature. It measures how quickly the direction change in the in the space curve, right? Curvature is the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to the arc length. So that is, that is the rate of change of the unit tangent vector with respect to arc length, okay? So dt dx, the t here is the unit tangent vector, the s here is the arc length. And that's the definition for the curvature. Now, since the unit tangent vector, they all have magnitude to be one, so only the direction of the tangent vector change contribute to this curvature. Okay, so it measure how quickly the direction change. Okay, next one over here. Uh, why the formula for curvature in terms of r prime of t and t prime of t? What is the formula? <laughs> I, I heard someone murmur. And which one it should be in the numerator? Well, we, uh, we have this one over here, right? So that was the definition, dtds. And then by the chain rule, we can actually write this as dt dt in this. 
And the numerator on top, it is t prime of t. The, this numerator here on top is t prime, the magnitude of t prime of t. This one over here is the magnitude of r prime of t. So that's the formula for curvature in terms of t prime and r prime. The next one, uh, remember we have three formula for curvature. So this is the one, one of them. And another one is in terms of r prime and r double prime. Do you guys remember that formula? Curvature equal to it. Is it the, uh, okay, let me just refresh your memory. It's right here, okay. Is the magnitude of the cost product of r prime and r double prime divided by the third power of the magnitude of r prime. So sometimes this formula here is more useful when you do the calculation of the curvature. So in this formula, remember you need to get r prime, you need to get r double prime. You also need to find the magnitude of that, okay? So if you can get this in those ingredients, you'll be able to calculate the curvature. So this is for, any space curve, you can calculate any continuous space curve, you can calculate the curvature this way, okay? Continuous differentiable, actually smooth curve, okay? Okay, what about if the curve is on a plane, on a 2D plane with this equation, y equal f of x, what will be the curvature? Well, it is a long formula, okay? It's very hard to say it. Let me refresh your memory here. So this is what happened in the note. Okay, for a plane curve, the, the curvature, to calculate the curvature, you can use this formula, okay? So if you can, if you have a curve that's on X and Y plane, then you can actually use this, okay? If Y is a function of X, you can use this to calculate the curvature, okay? Now, what's the difference between this one and this one? This is actually, this one over here is a general formula. So this one here is a general formula and it works for okay, or 3D space curve. This one over here only works for plane curve and only when y is a function of x. Next question, what's the formula for unit normal and binormal vector of a space curve, RT? Okay, let's get the unit normal, right? Do you guys remember what's the notation for unit normal? It is what? Unit norm n, right? Yeah, it is n. This is n of nt. Okay, it's right here. Um, let's see this one. This is a unit normal, okay? And what does it equal to? Anybody remember? Now, this is t, t. This one here will be t prime of t. t divided by its magnitude. This is t of t, and this will be t prime of t divided by its magnitude. And then what about the binormal vector? How is the binormal vector defined? It is the cost product of this, this one and this one. Okay, so it will be this. So we have this one over here. The next one, what is the normal plane of a curve at a point? Well, the normal plane of a, a curve at a point, see this one here is the one. So over here, what do I have? I have, uh, think about, you see this y1 over here is the curve. Okay? So this is the curve over here. And then the unit tangent will go this way. The unit tangent will go this way. And then the unit normal goes this way. And the cross part of this two is the binormal that goes that way. Then the normal plane will be formed by this two. And you can see that it's actually normal to this unit tangent, right? The unit tangent vector is actually a normal vector of this plane. So this is a normal plane. And what's the osculating plane? Well, this one here is the osculating plane down here, formed by this unit tangent and unit normal. And then this one here, <laughs> rectifying plane. Okay, so some picture. I'm not going to put this on the test. Here's some information for you to for your interest right here. Okay, the next one here, how do you find the velocity, speed, and acceleration of a particle that moves along a space curve, which is the, we just went over, right? How do you find the velocity? So suppose you're giving the space curve have this equation R of T. So this space curve, say R of T, then the velocity will be what? The, the word T, yes, you got it. And the acceleration is the second derivative, right? Okay, yeah, so that's it.